Inkscape 1.3 makes it easy to create editable text effects like this one. To start, we'll need a text object, so let's grab the text tool and create one. I'll go to the Select tool and scale up the text object while holding down Control to maintain the aspect ratio. Alright, now if we open up the Path Effects dialog by going up to the Path menu and choosing Path Effects, the Add Live Path Effect option here is disabled. This is because, as it says right here, text objects don't support live path effects. The normal route for adding path effects to a text object is to first turn the text object into a path. We can do this either by clicking the Convert Text to Paths button here, or by going to Path, Object to Path. However, once we turn a text object into a path, we can no longer edit the text of the object or change the font settings. But in Inkscape 1.3, we have a new Clone option here in the Path Effects dialog. If we click this, it creates a clone of the text object directly on top of it. And because it's a clone, if we change the text or any font settings of the original text object, the clone will change accordingly. Now if we select the clone again and take a look in the Path Effects dialog, the Add Live Path Effect option is now enabled. And if we click the arrow button here, it will show all of the available path effects. This means that we can add a path effect to the clone, so let's go with Offset here. We can now see that the offset path effect has been added to the clone. And if we go to the node tool, we can see this orange circular handle here. We can drag this out to offset the object. Now if we look at the path effects dialog again, we can also see that the clone original path effect has been added to the object. This is actually what links the clone to the original text object. And we can see here that it inherits the original object's LPEs, which are its path effects and it also inherits certain attributes, like the original object's style, clip path, and mask. Style here mainly refers to the fill and stroke properties of the object, and because the clone inherits the original object's style, if we change the color of the original object, it will also change the color of the clone. If we would like to be able to apply different colors to the two objects, we can select the clone again, highlight the style part in here along with the comma after it, delete it, and press Enter, and now we can change their colors individually. Alright, with the original text object selected, let's bring it to the top by clicking the Raise Selection to Top button up here. Now let's center the objects up by selecting them both, opening the Align and Distribute dialog, and clicking both the Align Vertically button and the Align Horizontally button. Okay, now let's grab just the clone, which is now at the bottom. Let's duplicate it by right-clicking it and choosing Duplicate. If we go back to the Path Effects dialog, we can see that the duplicate also has the clone original path effect attached to it. So this object is also a clone of the original text object. I'm going to change the color of this one to a darker shade. Now let's zoom in some. Then let's move the object slightly down and to the right. Alright, now we can zoom back out, and we're going to use the Duplicate and Transform function to reapply the small movement we just made to many copies of this object. The Duplicate and Transform function has the keyboard shortcut Control alt d I'm going to do it about 15 times. So now we have a bunch of copies of this clone going down and to the right. However, at the moment, they're all on top of the original text object and the first clone that we made. We want to put them at the bottom. To do this, we can right-click one, Go to Select Same and choose Fill Color. Now we have them all selected, so we can click the Lower Selection to Bottom button to send them all to the bottom. Okay, now let's grab the first clone here again and duplicate it again. And for this one, let's get rid of the Offset Path Effect by clicking the X button to the right of Offset here in the Path Effects dialog. This makes it go back to being the same size as the original. Let's make this one the same color as the bottom clones by going to the Color Picker tool here and clicking one of the bottom clones. Alright, now let's go back to the Select tool. Let's move the object down and to the right of the original text object. Then we can click the Lower Selection 1 Step button up here to put it beneath the original. Alright, one more thing we can do is add a shadow. For this, let's duplicate the first clone here one more time. Let's make it black. Now let's open up the Fill and Stroke dialog. And using the sliders here at the bottom, let's blur it a bit and lower the opacity. 
Now we can make it so it comes down and to the right of all of the other objects. Then send it to the bottom. Okay, so the text effect is finished. And because all of these objects are clones of the original text object here, if we change its text, it will also change the text of all the clones. Now one issue we might run into is that the final character in the text doesn't show up in the clones. To fix this, we just have to add an extra space to the end of the text, which updates the clones, then we can delete the space. Also, if we change any of the settings up here, like the font family, it might not update the clones at all. This has the same fix as before, where we just have to add an extra space to the end of the text, then delete it. However, changing certain other settings, like the spacing between baselines, will update the clones straight away. Okay, so that's how we can create editable text effects in Inkscape 1.3. Thanks for watching.